Hi, in this video we will talk about how to create box plots using the ggplot in R. So let's get started with um, our packages. We need two packages. One is the ggplot2 and the other one is plier. And the data which we will be using in this examples would be the chicken weights or chick weights data. So let's run this block. So the chick weights data has two columns. One is the weight and other is the feed. So for different feed types, what is the weight of the chickens um, under each um, feed type? So let's use that data to plot our uh, basic box plot. So using the chick weights data as my data source and x equals feed and y equals weight. So we would want to create a box plot for the weight. So when we run it, we get a box plot for different feed types and the weight, the median weight is shown. The the range of the data is shown, the, the, the upper and lower, the data uh, is also shown. So this is the first quarter or the first quartile. And then this is the median, then the third quartile. And the black dots show the outliers. So let's go further and plot a box plot by flipping the coordinates. So we want to make the x-axis as a y-axis and the y-axis. So basically switching the, the, the axis around. So you notice that uh, the feed has come on, on, on the y-axis instead of x-axis before. And in the next one, we would want to fill each box plot with different colors. So based on the feed, we want the box plots to be colored differently. So here is a uh, box plot which has different colors for each box plot. And that comes through the fill equals feed by putting it under the AES or the aesthetics. So it has to be within aesthetics. The fill has to be within the aesthetics to make um, get different colors. So in the next example, we would add the horizontal notches or the standard error bars in the box plot. So you can notice that there's two horizontal bars yeah, in each of your box plot, which has come from this command. Now, what if we wanted to color each of the box plot with the same color? We can do that by moving the fill into the jump box plot. And notice that it's not under AES, it's outside the AES. So just say fill equals blue, so that it knows every um, box plot would be colored blue. And I've put a transparency of 0 0.5, so which has toned down the, the blue color. If I remove the alpha from there, you would notice that color would be blue. And I can control different alpha values. So let's go a bit lighter. And so this is 0 0.1. And that's how you can control your fill colors. Now let's reorder the data in an ascending or descending order of the of the mean so uh, of of the median so using the reorder command we are telling the ggplot to reorder our feeds based on the descending order of the of the median weights so this command does the trick so you can see that um, it has gone into a descending order and if i wanted to change it to an ascending order i could do that as well by removing the the minus sign, you would notice that it has gone to an ascending order of the median weights for each feed type. In this example, we are changing the colors of the outlier. So remember the outliers were uh, the black dots on both sides, the lower um, outliers and the outliers on the higher side. Um, we have changed that color to red and the shape to shape equals one. So this is what we get when we do that. You can experiment with different colors and also different numbers of the shape, one, two, three, four, etc. Now in this case, I'm also adding the geom point geometry, which will actually do a dot plot as well. So with the result of uh, mixing the box plot and the jump points, this is what I get. The individual data points are actually shown, but there's only one problem that there might be multiple data points on top of each other, which is not really 
visible or not really apparent um, in this chart. We can overcome that problem by running the the jom jitter instead of uh, jom point. So jom jitter actually places the dots around or it jitters it around so that more dots are visible and you can appreciate the, the length and breadth of the of your data. Now, what if I wanted to change the shape of the uh, dots as well? So using the shape equals two, color equals blue, and the size you can control uh, what, what dots are actually plotted. So from the round, we have changed it to a triangle shape now, and the color is blue, and the size is one. In some cases, you would want to hide or remove your outliers. You can do that by saying outlier.shape equals NA, you would notice that those red dots which were shown are gone in this example. Because we are still plotting our jom jitter, you would still see the points coming from the jom jitter. If I hide the jom, jom jitter as well, you would notice that now the outliers are not shown, not even the, the jom jitter points are um, shown as well. So let's bring it back. So in this example, we would want to show the mean value of, of the weight as well. So introducing the function equals mean, jom equals point, um, color equals dark red, and the size equals two. Using the stat summary command, we would get the mean plotted as well. You can see that the median is the horizontal line, and then the median is a horizontal line whereas the the mean of the weight is actually plot, uh, plotted as a dot because of this command now moving further we could show the confidence intervals of the of the mean as well using the stat summary so i'll slightly extend this so this is the command which is going to give us the mean uh, confidence levels and this is 95% um, confidence level so using this we can see that our range or the of the confidence level the lower confidence level upper confidence level of our mean weight is actually plotted as well on on, on each box plot There's another way of um, doing the confidence levels, which is through the bootstrap method. And ggplot provides this functionality. If you use mean CL boot instead of the mean CL normal, which we did earlier, you would get the, 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 the low confidence level, upper confidence level using the bootstrap method. So this is the command which does the trick. Now let's switch on to a different data set. And for this example, we'll be using the movies data. You would need to have the ggplot2 movies package installed to be able to use the movies data set. So if I run this, you would see that it has the titles of the movies, the year and the rating. We are mainly interested in the in the rating and the number of votes which we get. You can notice that the rating is um, a double or a, a numeric with um, decimal values like, for example, 6.4, 6.0, etc. So, with that in mind, let's plot our box plot using the movie starter and using the votes as the y-axis and the x as the rate or, or the rating as the x-axis. And this is what we get. You would notice that it doesn't look like a box plot at all. Uh, there are two reasons. One is that the number of um, the, 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 the large variation in the data. And even if there was a, a box plot being plotted, you can't really notice it because number one, the data is uh, the, the volume of the data is large uh, and there's large variation in the data as well next to each other. One way to make it a bit more clearer is by changing the coordinates to a log scale on the y-axis and with that you would notice that suddenly the box plots are visible because log scale has actually stre stretched out the, 
the the 50,000 uh, notch. Um, there's a different video which we have created just to show the difference between a log scale and the linear scale in your uh, ggplots. Now, because this is a continuous variable, for example, we have 2.5, 2.6, 2.7 ratings, and the box plots are kind of so many box plots. But to make sense out, out of this, maybe we can round it up. And before we round it up in our ggplots, let's run this command um, and using the package plier, I'm using the round any command. So for example, you would notice that if I run all these, the first one has been rounded to two because we said rounded, so 2.4 obviously gets rounded to two. In the second case, you could round it to the top or the ceiling. In this case, it has actually gone to the to the next integer value, which is three. Similarly, you can bring it down. 0.4 will become two in this case because we are bringing it to floor or to the, to the lower um, integer value. And this is the actual syntax. So the first one is the number itself. The second one is the accuracy which you want. And the third one is um, whether you're using the ceiling or not. So this, this is how it works in, 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 the, in the complete syntax of round any. So using round any, we are rounding it to one um, complete um, numeric value or the integer value. So if I run this, you would notice that um, our box plots have been reduced because each box plot is now denoting one integer value. And we can also change it to a higher value. For example, in this case, I'm rounding it to the five. So, so we only got three box plots. And with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you found this information useful. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you, bye.